Here's a quick DIY on how to install the CSF radiator for the N54. The reason you probably want one of these radiators is for track driving. While on the track you will very quickly hit the coolant limp mode and there is a shadow limp mode leading up to that at around 240 degrees your car will start limiting power. Uh, shifts will also be kind of strange and it's just not good to have coolant that hot while on the track as you're slowly cooking your engine. First you want to start with removing your under tray. There are just a bunch of 8mm bolts scattered around on the underbody. Remove these and then the tray will come out. Next on automatic cars there is this heat exchanger held in by a T25. Next on the top of the radiator fan there is a T25 along with this plug. You want to remove both of those. There is also a clip on the right side of the radiator fan that you need to wedge forward with a screwdriver so that you can remove the fan. Once all of that's done, you can go ahead and pull the fan out. Once you've removed the radiator fan, you need to take out the intercooler. It is held on by two hoses. Those are held on by T-bolt clamps that you need to undo. Once you get those hoses off, there's two bolts on the bottom of the intercooler holding it to the car. Now that the intercooler is out, you have access to the drain bolt on the radiator. So you want to go ahead and take a large Phillips screwdriver and undo that. You will notice it won't drain much if your coolant reservoir tank is closed, so if you want to drain it, go ahead and open that. Once you've drained the coolant, you can go ahead and remove the radiator hoses. They are either held in with little clips or by T25 bolts, and there are four on the radiator. While I'm removing these hoses, I will mention I would recommend having relocated inlets in order to install the CSF radiator. Because this radiator is slightly thicker, you might end up having the radiator fan pushing the inlet into the serpentine belt. So having relocated inlets will make the radiator fan easier to remove and should avoid any issues with snapping your serpentine belt or cutting into the inlet. Once those are removed, you can go ahead and undo the two T25 bolts at the top of the radiator so that you can remove it. I found it helpful to remove the upper radiator hose along with the charge pipe and all of its piping in order to get this radiator out and get the new one in without damaging any fins. Once you get the radiator out, you need to transfer over this piece on the lower right side to the CSF radiator. It just comes undone with the T25 and then you can bolt it in with the new 8mm bolts on the CSF radiator. Installing the new radiator is the exact same as removal, so I would start with the two T25s in the top left and right, then reconnect all of your hoses. Once the radiator is in, I would do the coolant bleed procedure. So that would be putting your car in ignition, putting the fan on the lowest setting, the temperature to the highest setting, and then holding the gas pedal for 10 seconds. I had to trim my radiator fan in order to get it to fit properly. So that might be something you encounter. So I just took a Dremel and trimmed some pieces off. So I'm hoping this new radiator solves my cooling issue on the track, dealing with power loss, and hopefully by next season I will be able to get some more footage out to you guys and give a proper review on this radiator. Thanks for watching.